Hi you guys, so this video is just a Shark Bites video about where we're staying, a little bit about the area we're staying in. And I apologize for the noise. My husband's just started up a generator, I think, so he can thaw some meat in the microwave because we have no power here. But anyway, so this is Shark Bites. Stay tuned and I will give you a tour of our camper and where we're staying. Okay, so here is my home away from home. This is our trailer. It's a fifth wheel. We come in right here. There's my door. And when I come in and turn to the left, this is my dining room area, my living space, with my little puppy dog, Diesel. You say hi, Diesel? Yeah. And then over here is my kitchen, freezer and refrigerator, microwave, stove, oven. A lot of it I can't use. I can right now because I have a generator running, but um, we are off the grid right now. And this island uh, in the center has a lot of storage. It stores over here when we're un underway. Everything locks down, these sides come together. And then there's about a foot and a half of walking space. Now if I come to this side, and sorry for the fast turn, Looking this way, this is my kitchen area, my dining room, living area. The other thing with the dinette is that it has leaves. I can pull this table out and it has two leaves that will go in and it comes way out to about here. And we can comfortably seat six to seven people around the table very well. And then of course we have extra seating and end tables if we need to use those. So when the weather's bad and we're camping with friends or family or whatever, they all come storming in here and this is where we would eat. Yeah, that is a fireplace over there. Excuse all the stuff. That's my plein air bag, my sketching bag, and my little mini tripod, my umbrella, all that stuff is sitting out right now. Um, down under that desk area is a fireplace. Um, it's electric. Kind of, I thought it was a little hokey in the beginning, but when we got it, um, somebody pointed out if you're someplace with electricity and cool weather, you can run it and heat your entire trailer, which we do. Um, but right now I have my propane on and I'm heating with the furnace, or heating with the propane furnace, um, which I'm very thankful for. He'll be back in a minute. You can go out in a minute. Then coming upstairs, um, I ran out of wood outside. That's my last log, and Pat's out buying wood for us right now. Um, we come upstairs here, and straight ahead is our bedroom. And then to the left here is our bathroom. And just like any trailer bathroom, we've got the toilet. It's a real toilet porcelain. <laughs> and a uh, full shower. And we have um, a place for storage up here. And down below here, this was supposed to be for a washer-dryer combo, but we did not get that. We may in the future, I don't know. And then the sink, more storage under the sink, and our, our um, medicine cabinet, and me. Hello, hello. Um, I should have had a light on so you could see better in here. I will give you a quick view. That is everything. And I can enter my bedroom either from this direction or through the through the bathroom or hallway. So I will just go through the hallway. Let me turn off some lights here. And into our bedroom. Um, which is also kind of messy right now. Um, and of course the dog's on the bed. We have a king size bed, which is really nice. We we sleep on a king size at home, so we like having this. And we have a memory foam topper on top of this bed, so it's quite thick. And our closet is a full closet. And then we have another closet over here. We have a dresser in this area. And all these fans are left over from the hot days a couple days ago. But now it is very, very cool out. We are at about 58, maybe 60 degrees. I brought my watercolor book with me to read. Um, so that's it. That's the tour of where we live when we are 
camping. I call it glamping because we're really not camping. We're not roughing it at all, even though we're on the roughing it side. So over here is where all of the light switches, um, the main switches for outside, inside, for our awning, um, checking how full our tanks are, um, battery levels, that kind of thing. Um, so that's pretty much it. And under here is where our vacuum hooks in. We have central vacuuming. So our bag is outside underneath in the storage area and my vacuum stores in that closet down the hall. And that is it. So now I will take you on a tour of where we are staying this week. Um, Corey Kay asked for more information on where we're at. So I will do this next. Hey guys. So this is where I am staying. This is the campground called Maple Bay State Forest Campground. It is a rustic campground and it has, I think, about maybe 40 campsites. <laughs> um, this, is where, this is where we are camping. I was sorry, my husband was being a goofball. And um, we moved to this site from one way and back where we were practically underwater. This campground has a lot of water in it and as you probably saw out the window somebody at some point had tried to build a moat <laughs> across from one campsite to our campsite with a wood pallet and this is what we have well fortunately or unfortunately for diesel he loves to play in this and it's like all wet back here but where we were was even worse and this lake that we're staying at is called Tor um, Burt Lake. I'm sorry, I almost said Torch Lake. That's a different lake. This one is called Burt Lake. And this is one of the biggest inland lakes in Michigan. The biggest is Torch Lake um, because of the amount of water it holds. It's not as big across as some other lakes, but Torch Lake is about 285 feet deep at its deepest point and then Houghton Lake would be the largest surface area lake. This is Burt Lake and Burt Lake is about five miles across to the other side out there. Over there is five miles and it is 10 miles long and you can't see all 10 miles because there are peninsulas that poke out and make it difficult to see. This lake isn't very deep. I think at its deepest point, it's only about 73 feet deep. Um, but it is part of what is called a chain of lakes, which start over in Lake Michigan and comes through, uh, I forget which rivers, one river into Crooked Lake, from Crooked Lake into Crooked River, which is down there. That's where I was taking photos the other day then from Crooked Lake into Burt Lake here, and then from Burt Lake into Indian River, and then from Indian River into Lake Sheboygan, I think, and then out into Lake Huron. So it goes from Lake Michigan to Lake Huron, but it cuts across the t northernmost part of the mitten of the Lower Peninsula of Michigan. And we do go by the hand signal. <laughs> this is the Lower Peninsula, and then this would be the upper peninsula so if you connected them together that's what it would look like but i can't do both hands and hold my camera at the same time so anyway that's a little bit about burt lake my husband wanted to come here on vacation because he wanted to do the chain of lakes and he was out fishing this morning and didn't catch a lot of fish pike and a few perch with his brother and nephew and they're staying across the lake over, way over there, where we were supposed to camp. And we're not camping over there because, actually it's over there, right over this way somewhere. But we're not camping over there because we tried to camp there the other day and we couldn't get the truck, the trailer level enough and have the hitch uncouple from the truck. Um, because it was torquing. The trailer was on one angle, the truck was on another angle, and we couldn't get it level enough to 
undo it. So we had to leave the campground and they're still camping over there and we are over here camping. But I was very happy about that because I prefer camping in rustic campgrounds because I love the privacy. I mean, you look at where we're at. We have all of this corner to ourselves and then the next camper is way over there. Over here, there are a bunch of tents over here, but there hasn't been anybody there in three days. Um, when we had a storm a couple of days ago, they left and they haven't come back. Um, so I'm not sure where they're at, but it is a nice campground. This is the road that we were staying down, way down there. On the left-hand side, past where that white vehicle is, a few campsites down. And it's very pretty down there too. I really like this place, but it's very desolate. So all of this area over here is opposite of our campsite. And it gives us a lot of privacy. Bella's on, on the chain gang because he went after a dog. Yeah, you got to stop it. <laughs> And a few of you were asking for an update on my dad. He's doing very well. He got out of the hospital a couple of weeks ago and he went into rehab and he was doing so well in rehab that he graduated and they're allowing him to walk on his own with a walker. Um, prior to being hospitalized, he... Um, used a cane but he was pretty weak at the time so he's pretty happy about getting some of his independence back he has to stay in the rehab center for a few more weeks until he finishes up his IV antibiotics and then they're going to let him go and he'll probably stay down in the city with us for a little bit until we're sure he can go back home on his own he still has wound care done to his foot so he had another wound that they did not remove when they amputated um, the fore part of his foot and his large toe. So we have to keep an eye on that. And he's kind of blind. He is blind. <laughs> um, legally. And legally blind. And so I don't trust him to do the wound care himself. But he does like his independence. He will be 90 in October. So um, it's kind. Of, he's set in his ways. You know what I mean? <laughs> But anyway, I appreciate all the well wishes, the prayers, and and um, all of that. It's just been really, really nice of you all. And thanks for asking about him. I appreciate it. So uh, I've been talking to him by phone while we've been on vacation, and he's doing really well. So that is it. So everybody have a great day. Remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Bye-bye.